good morning students um, i hope all of you are fine and uh, staying safe at home um, most of the topics um, in oral pathology has been covered a few topics have been left behind and uh, today we shall uh, start with a new chapter it is diseases of bone and um, yeah today's class uh, we shall be uh, discussing a few diseases and all these are uh, genetic diseases of bone there is, that is there is going to be something wrong with um, the genes which are going to get mutated and because of which the diseases are going to get manifested the first disease which we are going to discuss today is osteogenesis imperfecta so as the name indicates imperfecta there is uh, going to be Uh, something which is not perfect or uh, something uh, which is uh, going to be abnormal and osteogenesis that is the formation of bone is not going to be proper this osteogenesis imperfecta is also called brittle bones or uh, lobstein's disease uh, it is a most common type of developmental inherited bone disorder and uh, it is a hereditary bone disease it shows both autosomal dominant and autosomal recessive pattern of an inheritance so what basically happens in osteogenesis imperfecta i said bone is not going to form properly why is this bone not going to form properly because there is going to be an abnormality which is going to be seen in type 1 collagen there is going to be impairment of collagen maturation as you all know collagen type 1 is the most predominant connective tissue protein which is seen throughout the body and um, it is also seen in bone a lot of it is seen in bone so uh, the genes col1 a1 and col1 a2 code for collagen and uh, these genes are going to get mutated which is going to cause an impairment in collagen maturation subsequently this is going to affect bone formation so there is going to be fragile bones okay and um, so upon fracture supposing bones form but they will be uh, uh, very weak and very delicate so there will be frequent fractures and upon fracture uh, healing also will occur but there will be exuberant callus formation okay now um i will just tell you the chief clinical features which will be seen in osteogenesis imperfecta one is bone fragility the other is in the eyes that is there will be blue sclera the sclera will be pale blue okay why is the sclera blue because the pigmented choroid which will which is behind will show through and because of that the sclera will appear blue and why this happens again because there is defect in collagen so there is bone fragility there is blue sclera these are the two main features which will be seen in osteogenesis imperfecta and um, this blue sclera will be seen in other conditions also like osteopetrosis fetal rickets paget's disease marfan syndrome but major majorly it will be seen in osteogenesis imperfecta okay and apart from this bone fragility and uh, blue sclera you can have deafness then uh, teeth abnormalities a peculiar shape to the skull tendency towards capillary bleeding or bruising these are all additional features that will be seen there are four main types okay type 1 to type 4 these types depend upon the age like at whichever age the disease is going to manifest that particular type will be seen but if you see in all the four types he will say more or less the same features uh, bone fragility kyphoscoliosis blue sclera ec bruising and everything okay so uh, this is one uh, picture showing uh, the fragility of bones and dentinogenesis uh, imperfecta and this is type 2 type 2 is uh, uh, most of the babies they will be still born if at all uh, birth occurs the babies will die before 4 weeks of age okay and um, 
type 3 also the same thing as I said. Uh, so, this is a picture of kyphoscoliosis and this is type 4. So, uh, um, if you see uh, in all these four types more or less uh, both dentitions will be affected that is both primary dentition and uh, permanent dentition will be affected. There will be as I said there will be dentinogenesis imperfecta apart from that malocclusion cross bite open bite also can be seen. And radiographically, there will be osteopenia, bowing, angulation, multiple fractures and omian bone in the skull. So, this is one picture where you can see uh, the um, curvature in the bones, you can very well appreciate. And histologically, there is going to be abnormal collagen synthesis. And this is one picture which uh, shows uh, an abnormal bone formation uh, uh, that is uh, immature bone due to abnormality in collagen synthesis. And if you see treatment, there is no particular treatment, okay. So, with regards to osteogenesis imperfecta, you just say there, uh, uh, there is uh, mutation in col one a one col one a 2 gene and the main uh, features will be bone fragility, blue sclera, dentinogenesis imperfecta and four types, that is it, okay. Now, we will go to Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome also is a heritable genetic defect of bone. But what is going to be wrong? Again, there is going to be defect in the connective tissue. Uh, it has an autosomal dominant mode of uh, inheritance. And one famous instance is President Abraham Lincoln. I hope you all know uh, uh, President Abraham Lincoln. He had this Marfan syndrome. Okay, And uh, etiology, there is uh, going to be defect in fibrillin gene. FBN1 gene, fibrillin gene. It is a gene which is seen in uh, elastic fibers. Again, elastic fibers are present in connective tissue. So, if you see in Marfan syndrome, uh, the three major systems will be affected. Musculoskeletal, cardiac and ocular. Okay. So, when you write about Marfan syndrome, uh, you say uh, it is also a heritable, heritable defect of connective tissue, mutation of fibrillin 1 gene, coding for fibrillin and three systems will mainly be affected, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal and ocular, ocular ok. So, what, what happens in the musculoskeletal system? What deformities will be seen? You will be seeing three main deformities, one is arachnodactyly, the other is dolichostenomelia, the other is thoracolumbar scoliosis. Okay. Uh, this picture shows two main features, arachnodactyly and dolichostenomelia. Arachnodactyly means the fingers will be longer when compared to a normal individual. You can very well see it in this picture. Dolichostenomelia means the length of the limbs will be longer than the length of the trunk that is called as dolichostenomelia. You can also see it in this picture. And uh, one more thing what I told was thoracolumbar scoliosis that is scoliosis means there will be extreme curvature of the spine. I hope you all uh, might have heard all these terms scoliosis, lardosis, kyphosis, kyphoscoliosis that is nothing but extreme curvature of the spine and um, the shape of the skull will be uh, long, narrow, there will be hyper extensibility of the joints. But uh, when it comes to the cardiovascular system, that is the second system, right? Cardiovascular system, you will be able to see aortic uh, dilation, aortic regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse can be seen sometimes. So, these are the cardiovascular manifestations. And ocular findings, you can see myopia, cataract, retinal detachment and everything. And oral manifestations, there will be high arched palate, bifid uvula, malocclusion, radiographically increased height of the skull, enlarged frontal sinus and high arched palate. There is no specific treatment for this condition. So, this is about Marfan syndrome. Okay. And there is one more condition called achondrogenesis. You just know that uh, it is a heterogeneous group of chondrodysplasia. There is some, something going to be wrong with the cartilage and there are two types, okay, type 1 and type 2, that is it. And um, hypophosphatasia, again it is a rare inherited metabolic disease of uh, bone. There is going to be problem with one enzyme in hypophosphatasia. It is called alkaline phosphatase. As you all know, alkaline phosphatase 
is an enzyme which is needed for mineralization of bone and this alkaline phosphatase enzyme is coded by a gene which is TNSALP tissue non specific alkaline phosphatase deficiency there is going to be deficiency of this gene tissue non specific alkaline phosphatase which is going to hinder the mineralization of bone okay and there are five categories based upon the clinical presentation it is perinatal infantile childhood adult and odonto hypophosphatasia perinatal is as the name indicates it will be seen at birth and the babies will not survive they will die and death occurs due to respiratory failure infantile form it is uh, diagnosed at six months of age again there is respiratory complication and um, childhood form there will be skeletal deformities short stature dolichocephalic skull waddling gait and everything and dentition there will be premature loss of dentition adult form it will manifest only during middle age food pain and thigh pain will be seen in this also free premature loss of deciduous teeth will be seen odonto hypophosphatasia the, the individual is going to be perfectly normal except for premature loss of teeth so this is hypophosphatasia you just need to know that uh, there is deficiency of tissue non specific alkaline phosphatase deficiency tn uh, n s a l p tissue non specific tn s a l p alkaline phosphatase deficiency and five types perinatal you will have then infantile childhood adult and odonto hypophosphatasia then osteopetrosis like this is uh, one another important uh, condition when, com when it comes to this uh, genetic diseases of bone it is also called marble bone disease or albers skonberg disease okay marble bone disease why is it called marble bone disease i will tell you it is a rare hereditary bone disorder there is going to be increase in bone density due to defect in bone remodeling caused by failure of normal osteoclast function that is what will happen is in osteopetrosis bone formation is going to be completely normal there is going to be continuous bone formation but what is going to be defective is the osteoclast as you all know osteoclast is the cell which is needed for resorption of bone osteoclast is going to be defective so there is no bone resorption there is only continuous bone formation so more and more bone is formed and is and it is going to give the appearance of a marble kind of a thing and so this disease is called marble bone disease okay and there are three main types infantile intermediate and adult what actually happens in uh, osteopetrosis that is what i told you osteoclast will not uh, function properly so bone remodeling is affected there is going to be only continuous bone formation and no bone resorption the exact mechanism of why there is no bone resorption is not known but they say there is deficiency of carbonic anhydrase carbonic anhydrase enzyme in osteoclast and the absence of this enzyme will cause defective hydrogen ion pumping and this in turn is going to cause defective bone formation bone resorption the exact mechanism is not known but this is uh, just they have presumed that uh, carbonic anhydrase will be deficient okay so infantile form it is autosomal recessive trait and uh, there will be sclerotic skeleton bone marrow failure uh, as continuously bone is uh, forming there will be signs of cranial nerve compression okay and intermediate it is between infantile and uh, adult form affected patients will have short stature uh, asymptomatic at birth the um, disease will manifest towards the end of first decade of life but again here also there will be bone marrow failure and hepatosplenomegaly and other uh, cranial nerve deficits also will be seen and adult form it is discovered later in life there again there will be sclerotic bone bone pain will be seen 10% of the patients will show osteomyelitis of mandible and as far as oral manifestations of uh, is concerned there will be delayed tooth eruption osteomyelitis then um, facial uh, deformities like hypercalorism frontal bossing will be seen and histologically yes as i said there is a failure of osteoclast 
to resorb skeletal tissue. So, remnants of mineralized uh, um, primary spongiosa that is the uh, spongy bone or cancellous bone will be seen. Islands of calcified cartilage with mature bone will be seen. That is basically histologically if you see there will be more and more of mature bone and um, there is no resorption of skeletal tissue. Okay? And uh, radiographically widespread increase in bone density. Uh, because of the widespread increase in bone density, uh, distinction between uh, cortical bone and cancellous bone will be lost. Yes, obviously it will be lost. And uh, IOPA or dental x-ray, if you see, you cannot see any roots. You cannot, uh, you will not be able to differentiate between roots or the alveolar socket. Everything will be the same. So, what are the key features in osteopetrosis? R rare genetic defect. There is no medullary space. Uh, and um, so there will be extra medullary hemopoiesis in liver and spleen, uh, liver and spleen. And when it, when it comes to oral manifestation, osteomyelitis is a complication. And uh, one more disease, uh, it's a um, genetic disease of bone, chondrodysplasia punctata. Again, there is going to be erratic uh, cartilage calcification, which is uh, going to produce this heterogeneous group of disorders. You just know cartilage calcification is not going to be proper okay that is it that is chondrodysplasia punctata and pic, uh, pycnodysostosis is there is going to be one enzyme called cathapsin K it is going to be deficient and it will cause pycnodysostosis it will be inherited as an autosomal recessive trait all these things you just know the name and what actually is going to go wrong that is it okay. And again mucopolysaccharidosis they are a group of lysosomal storage diseases. You just know there are 7 types type 1 to type 7 and there is going to be deficiency of enzymes involved in the degradation of MPS. Mucopolysaccharides also called as glycosaminoglycans they all are seen in the ground substance of the connective tissue. Uh, the enzymes which are involved in uh, degradation of this uh, MPS will be deficient which is going to cause mucopolysaccharidosis. Then it is rickets. I hope you all will have an idea of what is rickets. I am not going to say in detail. Just I will just uh, tell you um, what is rickets and what will what is going to go wrong. Rickets as you all know vitamin D deficiency it is going to affect children. There is going to be decreased mineralization at the level of growth plates. So there is retarded uh, growth. Osteomalacia same vitamin D deficiency seen in adults ok. So what is rickets? It is derived from ricken which means to bend. So the bone bone everything will be bent and um, all other thing, all other clinical features of rickets the um, rachetic deformities you are supposed to know ok. Uh, then the other condition is hyperparathyroidism as you all know. Uh, parathyroid glands will regulate uh, serum calcium and phosphorus levels by secreting parathyroid hormone. Hyperparathyroidism is a syndrome of hypercalcemia because there is excessive secretion of parathyroid hormone. So, there is primary hyperparathyroidism uh, which will occur due to an adenoma seen in adenoma or some tumor which is going to be seen in the parathyroid gland and um, hyperparathyroidism in com is com very much common in patients with type 1 and type 2 men syndrome multiple endocrine neoplasia and secondary hyperparathyroidism will occur because of hyperplasia of the parathyroid glands due to chronically low serum calcium levels and there is one more condition which is tertiary hyperparathyroidism it will be caused due to autonomous parathyroid function due to after long term hyperstimulation causing the hyper calcemia that is tertiary hyperparathyroidism and uh, in contrast to hyperparathyroidism we will have hypoparathyroidism. What is this hypoparathyroidism? Again it is hypocalcemia which will occur due to deficient parathyroid hormone secretion and uh, there will be neuromuscular hyper, uh, hyper excitability, serum calcium levels will be less and serum phosphate levels will be increased and there are uh, several clinical disorders. Uh, seen in other conditions characterized by end organ resistance to this parathyroid hormone is called pseudo hypoparathyroidism that is it will be seen due to other clinical disorders pseudo hypoparathyroidism. Then vitamin D resistant rickets it is refractory rickets it is nothing but 
uh, there will not be any response to the treatment given due to rickets that is what he says treatment with vitamin D will not produce any change in the rachetic status of these patients even when higher doses are given and it is called vitamin D resistant rickets. So, with this uh, part 1 of genetic disease or part 1 of diseases of bone is over there are some other lesions to be covered which will be dealt in the next class or uh, if you have any doubts please feel free to contact me at this number and um, mail uh, either uh, whatsapp me or uh, you can drop me an email to this uh, following email id thank you all